Welcome to Mastering Agility. If you want to listen to authentic conversations with the most inspiring guests, find like-minded people in the Mastering Agility Discord community or both online and face-to-face events, this is the platform for you. Grab a drink, sit back, and join professional scrum trainers Sander Dorr, Jim Sammons, and their guests in an all-new episode. Gentlemen, good morning. How are you guys doing? Great, how are you? I'm good. I'm always good when, when I see you. <laughs> <laughs> what a charm. And that's all, people. Happy that's all Thank the you. entire episode. Thank you for that. Well done. Uh, great conversation. Let's go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, we, yeah. we can leave now. Bye. Okay, uh, happy very to see good. you guys. <laughs> Before we dig into the content of Scrum Match, I'm curious, what has been the biggest lesson of this week for you guys? That's an interesting question, Sandor. The biggest lesson for me as a product owner yesterday was we were activating a new employer on the platform and we wanted to give them a white glove user experience. So really walking them through the platform. And by doing that, I kind of jumped bits of our own process in doing so. And I created confusion where I actually wanted to create clarity. So, um, that's, that's a big lesson, right? Um, Mm -hmm. maybe sometimes wait a bit. What's the confusion? Like, how did you create the confusion just by jumping on it? We, we connected them with the talent faster than they expected. Ah. So they were confused as an, Oh, I can actually see the talent data right now. Why is that? Right. I thought I would have to do this and that before. (laughs) So you actually overperformed. Yeah. We did, and we kind of we 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 in a way that um, the employer, the recruiter, couldn't absorb. Like as in, okay, I don't know why this has happened. I expected some other steps to be happening before. Uh, so we kind of over delivered with good intentions and unintentionally created created confusion where we wanted to avoid confusion. So that's that's an interesting um, learning. Um, the good. The good part of this is I can only be angry with myself, right? Because I did that. Yeah, but I think this is a really good lesson uh, because this topic specifically we, we discussed a couple of times in the podcast where when we're talking about releasing and your release strategy, um, it's good to base that on your client or your user retention rate or your, the uh, absorption rate. And this just depicts, again, how important it is to talk to your clients, to talk to your users, uh, and figure out what the best release strategy would be and when they can actually work with it, when they can absorb, when they expect you to deliver and those kind of things. So thank you for this perfect example. I'm going to steal this from now on. Steven, what about you? Fun, funny, funny, you, fun, fun, funny you say that. I just want to, uh, to, to dig a little bit deeper on that point. And that is I was speaking to one of our employers um, on, on, on Scrum Match and uh, she told me about a piece of functionality that she'd like to see um, on the platform. And I was able to say to her that our Scrum team was delivering that very increment the next day. <laughs> and the thing that she was looking for specifically that would make, make her life a lot better arrived to her the next morning. Wow, that's awesome. Which was a, fun, that was a fantastic uh, bit of news to be able to give. <laughs> what was her response? Um, she like, well, one, she was giddy and she, she kind of, she kind of laughed and gave me the, the, the thumbs up sign. Um, and, but she, she, she was very happy, um, because it would make her life a lot easier. <laughs> Aren't you afraid? Like, isn't there a voice in the back of your head that says, Oh, maybe be careful with this. Cause now we, we set the bar really high and we cannot keep this like this pace. Like this is not the way that's going to be the next time. No, that'll be a, <laughs> I'd love to have that problem. No, I'll, right. g- give me that problem every time. That that's a problem that I'll happily accept. <laughs> it's a challenge we accept every day, right? All right. So all of you the, who are listening, you now have a free pass to challenge both Joe and Stephen to deliver. Hundred percent. Every time, give us give us something that you think Scrum Match should deliver, and it doesn't deliver this as of today, and we'll give it. A think and if we think it's a good thing to do or if we think um there's value in discovering this a bit more we would either deliver a new version of scrum match or we run an experiment in order to figure out what's what's the need that we can that we can meet in order to increase value for either the scrum master side or the recruiter while we're talking about scrum match 
Uh, let's explain what Scrum Match is. Joe, what is Scrum Match? <laughs> it's a recruiting platform where companies that want to create more business value sooner find true Scrum Masters who can actually help them deliver that business value. And I guess that that deserves a bit more of an explanation, right? Because there's an important but subtle difference between a Scrum Master and what we call a true Scrum Master. Um, so that will lead me to like explain why we built it in the first place. Um, you know, we want to help companies create more business value sooner. It's not about Scrum, right? Scrum is a means to an end, and the end is to deliver more value faster. And that's also the original idea of Scrum, help organizations and their team create more value sooner. And now what happened over the course of the last, I think it's probably 15 years, that initial idea of Scrum, it didn't materialize. Um, too many organizations, too many teams, too many people, too many clients have been disappointed by someone saying, we do Scrum, and there was no real measurable business result coming out of that. And um, that's how Scrum got a bad name, right? And to us, the reasons are pretty obvious. I mean, we've been in the industry for, for long enough, um, it's almost 18 years, um, using Scrum. And and the the idea of Scrum, it has turned into an industry that has produced way too many quote unquote scrum masters and those those quote unquote scrum masters they fail to understand how to use scrum as a means to an end and not the end right so what happened is they created a lot of work around the actual rework without a real impact on business results and now we we see the consequences now the bubble burst right we have a weak economy and logically, companies, they, they need to reduce costs and they start where they don't see a contribution to business value. And that's the Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches, right? Um, but, but, I mean, even more so, now than ever, those companies, they need to become better at creating more business value sooner, right? They cannot afford to take years and millions of dollars or euros to build their products and services they need to get the right product to the market quickly, which means now more than ever, they also need a true Scrum Master can really help them, right? And again, it's not really about Scrum. Scrum is a, Scrum is a means to an end. It's a framework, right? Um, if you put this into the hands of a true Scrum Master, it's really, really powerful. Um, and what we like to use to explain the differences, the difference between a true scrum master and any scrum master is we like to go back to a professional sports team, right? I mean, imagine you are the owner of a professional sports team and the team um, has lots of players. They're all highly skilled, but yet the team doesn't win often enough, right? So what do you do? You get the best coach money can buy, right? And that coach will take the team to the next level that's needed to win the tournament or be top of the league, right? And by doing that, that coach will many times deliver the value, many times than his salary or their salary, right? Same is true for a Scrum Master, right? This industry has produced way too many people who call themselves a Scrum Master and they, they don't really know how to use Scrum as a means to an end. And the problem is in sports is so obvious, right? It's obvious whether your team wins or doesn't win, right? So it's obvious whether or not the coach has a positive impact on the team or not. Unfortunately, in business, it's not that obvious, right? The scores aren't that obvious. So that means for, for employers and their recruiters, it's actually hard to tell apart a true scrum master from a scrum master name only, right? And they don't know how to assess whether they talk to a true scrum master or someone who is really good at talking, right? Um, interestingly, we ran a poll on LinkedIn just this week and we asked, hey, how scrum masters, how did you get into your job, right? And many of them said, well, we were asked good questions. At the same time, um, we see this lack of business results in the industry, right? And just look at, look at the social media, look at what people say about scrum how employers um, like Spotify um, or um, Facebook, how they lay off 
agile coaches and scrum masters because they have created way too much work around the rework, right? Without impact. So that doesn't match, right? Obviously good questions, asking good questions and listening to smart sounding answers isn't good enough to tell apart a true scrum master from a scrum master in name only, right? And because it's so hard to do that within your recruiting process, we had the idea of helping them of creating scrum match. Right, so we do the hard work of that part of the assessment so that companies and their recruiters can find only true Scrum Masters who we have vetted before on Scrum Edge. Right? So taking away that risk from their business, the risk of investing too much time and money into someone who can't deliver business results, right? And who will probably create damage to your product, to your customers, your reputation. What would you say is the biggest difference between a true Scrum Master, a certified Scrum Master, professional Scrum Master, now we get all these terms, what differentiates a true Scrum Master from a professional Scrum Master, for instance? Mm -hmm. Steven, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think the answer is simple. Deliver value. You don't need to have any initial initials after your name. You don't need to have any certifications after your name. If you're somebody who can deliver business value, that's the difference, right? Um, I don't even think I need to have a, say anything else. Although I will say that me and Sander are wearing the official uniform of Scrum Masters everywhere, the gray, <laughs> the gray hoodie. <laughs> yeah, so the biggest difference, I guess, if I understand you correctly, is that they actually have the, 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 the practical experience, the tools, they have been going through the trenches, being able to uh, uh, not just talk to talk, but walk to walk as well. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. I, I mean, I suppose at the end of the day, the thing that most uh, that matters most is being able to deliver, right? And how many, how many scrum teams um, and are scrum masters out there work on teams that one deliver increments regularly right Re um, re release release software or release products regularly every sprint and of those teams that do actually deliver increments how many of those teams actually validate the value that those increments are actually delivering um in in my experience and me and joe's experience is most of the teams that we've seen fail even to do the first part as in teams fail to deliver increments, never mind validating the value that those increments br bring. And great scrum masters are able to do both, make sure their teams deliver working, so uh, working products every sprint, but also are able to validate the value that those products are bringing. If I may add, um, we heard from some employers when we talked to them that they weren't even aware that a scrum team is supposed to deliver a new version of their product, <laughs> the increment, mm -hmm. at least once per They weren't aware that this is like the minimum they need to do in order to enact um, one of their feedback loops, right? Um, answering the question, can we actually build it, right? Um, and that they need to release that sooner than later in order to learn, is it useful to users? Right, leading to the next question or the answer to the next question, is it is a good business for us? Right. So obviously there is yes yeah, a, a bit of a lack of of understanding on the recruiter and employer side about what's the purpose of Scrum, and obviously most Scrum masters fail to explain this and make that make that clear. Interestingly, when we interview Scrum masters. Um, we also ask for their the years in the job, right? Or in any job related to product development, right? It doesn't have to be the job of Scrum Master. And we were very surprised to learn through the data that we gathered that there is no direct relationship between the numbers of years of in job experience and their ability to use Scrum in order to deliver more value sooner. So it's kind of dangerous if you as in your hiring process look at a cv and you look at their years of job experience or scrum master experience and you see oh five years or 10 years or even 20 years right that's cool so they must be experienced there is no release relationship between that and the ability to use scrum as a means to an end 
No, and it kind of triggers me into thinking uh, this a uh, different discussion that I had both with colleagues as well as with Dave Snowden on this podcast, where he mentioned that it might start to be time to make IT and the I mean the whole range of IT, so that could be development, but also management and, and Scrum Mastery and those kind of things, to start making that a profession, so that there would be a sort of a governing body uh, to separate the actual people that know their stuff from the people that don't really uh, pass that bar. Do you think that Scrum Match might be a beginning of such a, let's say, filter? Yes, 100%. That's, that's uh, what we hope. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you go to a doctor, right, or you go to a lawyer or a tax consultant to seek advice, you know the entry criteria for them to claim that job title is super high. So why is that? It's super high because they can create a lot of value, but they can also create a lot of damage, right? The damage could be physical damage, a lot of financial damage, even death, right? So that's why why there are such high entry barriers to that. So why is it that in business where whether a team costs a million or earns a million to their business, why is it that does, this doesn't deserve a similar kind of entry barrier. Barrier doesn't make sense, right? So yeah, obviously, I mean, courses, um, training classes, certifications—they all have some value, right? Um, you need to start gaining knowledge at some point, right? And a good a good start is attending training. Um, but obviously, they are not enough, right? And it's it's too easy for someone to call themselves a scrum master, right? It's not something. It's not a legally protected title that you can either have or you can't. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Stephen, um, I'm curious, how did you build Scrum Match? I mean, it, it seems so easy, but I also know that development is not easy at all. Right. That's a really good question. And we did it in the best way possible. And we all took ourselves to Spain because we thought if we're going to build something, we might as well do it in nice weather, right? So we we took ourselves to Spain. Uh, so another thing to remind to remind the the the, the listenership here is we're a startup. We're, we've only been around for four months, and when uh, four months ago uh, we were in Spain and we basically built the first version of Scrum Match within a week. And um, after that week, a uh, small anecdote: I remember sitting with Joe very late night, very very late one night, um, in the bar. The, the 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 day we we launched and i asked joe and i said how many scrum masters do we need on the platform tomorrow for us to feel happy or confident and joe nervously kind of said i have no idea and i said well is 10 okay for um, after a day and he said okay we'll, we'll agree on 10 um now q4 months later we have 800 it's not it's not 10,000 it's 10. No not 10,000 just 10 10 scrum masters. And for you know 4 months later we have 800 scrum masters um on on the on the platform. And what's what's really exciting is the biggest bottlenecks um is as ourselves we only have so many reviewers. So it started off with me and Joe. We've grown we've grown our reviewers. We have reviewers now in um in in America. But we can absolutely see that there is a demand for this product. And we're we're growing our um our the scrum masters on the platform every day, and we're also growing the amount of employers that we're having on the platform every day. So it, it's an exciting time um in for Scrum Match. But going back to your question, I sorry if I went on a, on a small tangent, is that um it, of course we're we're building we're building Scrum Match using Scrum. We have a Scrum team that is building um building Scrum Match incrementally. And we also, we, I mean, we eat our own, own dog food and we do the, the things that every other Scrum team has to do. We release, we release a new version regularly, more often than not, more than one, one time um, in, in a sprint. Um, and we, are, we get regular user feedback. And that's our, that's our operating model, um, is to use Scrum to build our platform and to talk to our users a lot to get feedback so we can inspect and adapt. What is it? What is in it for the users? Like one of the biggest challenge, and I noticed that while teaching courses this week again, where developers or product owners, scrum masters, who have you, uh, they want to collect feedback from their users, but the users are like, eh, eh, I need to do my job right. 
uh, and why do I why do I attend your sessions or what what is in what is in it for me? So how do you have these kind of conversations with your users? Let, if I can jump in um, onto that question, so sorry, Joe. Um, that, the the thing that we found on the especially first of all on the Scrum Master side is a lot of these Scrum Masters have never been given feedback before in regards to um, how they're coaching, teaching, and using Scrum. So the actual act of us being able to give our Scrum Masters feedback is super, super valuable to them. Whether that's somebody who's on the pl who's on the platform and is a mature Scrum Master, or this is a Scrum Master who's just starting off, or even in the circumstances where we've told we've told some the people that they can't come on the platform because we don't see themselves being or showing true Scrum mastery, the feedback we've given have these people have told us were super valuable even if they meant, if meant they weren't on the on the platform. Um, and on on the on on the employer side, of course, everything we everything we can do to um, make our employers use our platform more is also only going to help Scrum masters. So that's that's in for them, right? They get immediate feedback many times, first time in their life, um, their professional careers, um, and that's super helpful to them to see how they can grow their their scrum maturity right and for employers it's about the same we we onboard everyone more or less personally giving them a white glove experience right now um so we talk to them directly right we have them on a video conference right we walk them through the process or we ask them um to go through the process of finding finding um, scrum masters and then we we ask them to think out loud or uh, we observe uh, how they do this we also build in um, quantitative measures into the product to measure user behavior not qualitative right but quantitative to see which of the features are used how often so they must be more useful Others that um, are used less often, maybe we don't need to invest a lot of time in improving those. Mastering Agility only works with organizations aligned with our values, and that's exactly why we are excited to work with our sponsor. Scrum Match is the free platform for professionals run by professionals. On Scrum Match, true Scrum Masters get hired by companies serious about their popular framework. The awesome people behind this platform have decades of experience, among them a professional scrum trainer for scrum.org. They have interviewed, trained, and coached hundreds of like-minded people, and they use this exact experience to make you stand out from the crowd and help you get in touch with companies looking for true scrum masters. So go to scrummatch.com and sprint to your dream job. Uh I'm interested in the development path or the, the degrading that you use to filter out like this is a starting scrum master, this is a true scrum master, this is something somewhere in between. But before going into that, Stephen, I'm uh, you were talking about development, development in Spain. Um, obviously, I would love to be in Spain as well and doing doing cool stuff like this. But how did you build it? Um, well, first of all, we have an, an amazing an amazing team um, building it. A group of uh, a group of great developers, great product, uh, great product product owner and scrum master, working on creating this, um, uh, creating creating the product. And in regards to in regards to how um um how the actual product was built, um, we, we you could say that we did scrum without doing scrum. We didn't need to explain scrum to um, in in the way in the way that the team worked. They just did it. So they would meet every. They would meet out. They would. They, they they would work. They would work every day. And every day we got, if if not one, um, an increment almost nearly every day, which was a new version, um, of the so um of of the software, and and that keeps happening to even the even this day, um. And the nice thing about the team is that we you don't explain. We don't need to explain Scrum to the team. It just 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 happens. I think Joe could probably speak. Um, more to that as the product owner, I could. But um, I, I, I think when we when when we first released, me and Joe were speaking about it. Like uh, like every every MVP that was released into the market, 
it was a very, very uh, rough version that uh, we probably thought was a little bit too rough, but it was just what we what we needed to get the feedback enough to see um, to validate some of our assumptions. That's that's an interesting story, I think. Um, but they say if you if you aren't embarrassed about what you have released, you might have <laughs> released too late, right? So I can I can um, wholeheartedly say I'm sufficiently embarrassed about our first release, right? It was really, really rough. Um, lots of rough edges where we knew the user experience wasn't ideal. But honestly, it was more than good enough to test our assumptions, right? When we started, we, ha we had this idea, but we, we knew it was our idea. Maybe it wasn't a good idea after all. So everything we did was really geared towards learning whether or not we do something that Scrum Masters on the one side of our platform and then employers on the other side find valuable. So we just did enough to see whether or not they would like to use it. And it just turned out they, they like to use it, right? So now is a good time to um, improve those rough features and sand off the rough edges um, and also come up with um, more things that we need to learn more about, right? We, we're not done learning yet. So it's all very, very early. So what's next? What's next is giving employers a better experience in finding the true Scrum Masters on the platform. Um, there is a maturity model which we use um, to differentiate between different Scrum Masters and their ability to use Scrum for one thing or the other. Um, and finding them involves like a lot of filtering Right? because we have like 800 Scrum Masters on the platform. Not all of them are live yet uh, because we do have a backlog of reviews. Um, we have two hands full of uh, employers and it's all globally basically, right? Though so concentrated on North America and Europe. Uh, so we need to help employers find Scrum Masters at their locations um, having exactly the scrum maturity they need in order to improve the maturity of their organization. And that involves a bit of technology, but also thinking about the user experience and the process, right? So uh, the process is a bit concierge here and here, here and there, where we do stuff manually in the background. Employers are aware of that. Also, scrum masters are because we are open and transparent about this. Um, but now that, that it seems like we, we struggle to scale with, with the demand, we need to automate this more, right? So that's, that's what's going to be next. I can imagine that's a good position to be in, like, struggle to scale because of your own success. Kudos to you, hats off. Oh, yeah. It's everyone, every product owner's dream, basically, right? It's the problem you want to have. <laughs> yeah. It also feels like if you, if you mention it like this, it feels like, the product itself is pretty lean. Uh, so you're not adding too much stuff in there that that doesn't really add any value. So you keep the, the product itself nimble. And that's something that I was talking about with a couple of product owners earlier this week. That there are so many organizations that die of indigestion rather than starvation. Yeah. Uh, great quote by, by Mr. Packard. But it's so easy to get caught up in whatever stakeholders demand or, you know, I have a great idea. You should totally build this. You, I, I have a shower thought here. We're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, you have a massive product uh, with all these features that you don't need. Well, we can't afford to do that, right? We do not have venture capital in, in that product yet, right? Um, this product is completely developed by our parent company, Amazing Outcomes, right? Um, it's a very small team, the plug and play scrum team, right? Um, it's a very small team. So we need to be very careful with what we ask. And many times it's me, the product owner, who has uh, those shower ideas, right? And I take them to the team and we talk about them a lot. And many times they have a better idea how to achieve the same result or the same learning with less work. Oh, that's perfect. And that's super cool, right? Uh, me as the product owner, not being the smartest person in the room, but the developers many times, it's because they don't just think about code and how to do this or that feature, but also about the problem we are trying to solve. And that's how we can afford to have a very small team 
um, and still crank out new versions um, almost daily. Yeah, that's awesome. Stephen, let's go back to the, the grading system or the, whatever you want to call it. Like, do you have a scale of where Scrum Masters would, would end up? Uh, you talked about Scrum Masters that wouldn't even get into the, into the conversation because they don't have the, the right experience. Then on the other side of the spectrum, we have true Scrum Masters. What's in between? So um, as you said, let, let's, start, let's start from the bottom. About 44% of the, um, the people who apply to become on Scrum Match, we don't let on the platform. Um, it's not. It's not because they're that they're 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 bad people. It's just they're not using Scrum to deliver value. Um, after that, we have people who have, shall we say, theoretical knowledge but no practical experience of of, of doing Scrum, right? And then we then we have a kind of like, well, Scrum Scrum masters, but what are the Scrum masters focusing on? Right, and if you kind of think about like your 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 when you first became a scrum master, you probably focused a little bit more on on process at the start than value. Right, you're in a new team, you wanted to get things working, you focused on events, you focus on creating definitions of done, you focus on getting the mechanics of stuff of, of stuff right, and that's on one end of the scale. And on the completely the the other end of the scale are the scrum masters who are working and they are working up and down the value chain, deli uh, delivering value across organizations and across multiple uh, multiple uh, multiple um, value chains. And that's the kind of the, uh, yeah, the, the unicorn, uh, the unicorn scrum masters. Uh, we, we have a couple of them on the, on the platform. And in between, just a question of fo focus. Are the scrum masters focusing on the um, on the product? Are they focusing on the value chain, looking up and down in the value chain? So we have we have a model that incorporates um, seven um, seven areas, from not platform to the deli um, delivering value across the organization, um, and anybody who's interested can they 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 they, they can um, um, employers can find that um, mod um, model on our platform. Um, is it is it um, on the website, Joe? I think it is right. Our maturity model. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. So how does it work within uh, in, within the team of Scrum, uh, Scrum Match or Amazing Outcomes for that matter? You met, you already mentioned that you have a, a very small team. What do you look for in people that work for Scrum Match or for Amazing Outcomes? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we set the expectations very clearly right from the start. So when we, when we started to hire the plug and play Scrum team last year, um, we made it clear we're going to be a scrum team, right? And that's non-negotiable, right? So we set the boundary conditions very clearly for everyone to see. And we told everyone we're going to focus on one thing at a time. And then we'll work as a team to create a one piece flow, if you will, where we work on one feature at a time as a team. And we deliver that feature, create a new version before we turn to the next feature. So I think that's the biggest difference, right? The focus. The quality of focus we have, um, and then a bit of automation, of course, because it's technology, right? And you can automate parts of, for example, your build and deployment and your quality assurance process. And that's about it. It's 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 not rocket science, right? Um, it's just that we might be able to focus a bit more than others. I, and I want to pick up on that, Joe. I mean, like in in Scrum in the Scrum teams that we're supporting, how how many Scrum teams are able to actually reduce their work in progress, right? <laughs> have actual focus, have actual focus um, on one thing at a time, and being able to um, stop starting and start start delivering, right? Mm. And that's one thing that our um, our, our Scrum team is very good at is focusing on one thing at a time and delivering regularly. What's also helpful in doing that is uh, we haven't talked about that yet, but it, I mean, it's kind of easy to get lost in all the details, right? If you do Scrum and if you only look at sprints, right, um, and you find yourself being super busy and it's easy to get like, like um, lose, mm -hmm. lose um, sight of your goals and why you're doing that. So actually, we like to, um, to put a bit of governance around Scrum. Um, so, um, just to be very clear and focused on a strategic goal, which means, um, um, tying your product 
that you that you intend to build to um, to business outcomes, right? To support your your business goals, and also having goals that are easy to measure, so that you know uh, are we making progress to business outcomes versus just delivering a new feature. And we found that bit of extra governance that we put around Scrum in in the concept of evidence based management, right? Where we know we have a strategic goal. Um, to link the product to business outcomes. We do have the intermediate goal, which is the same as the product goal in Scrum, right? And we we like to um, set a goal, which is an outcome. So it's a change in user behavior, either on the Scrum Master side or the recruiter side. And we come up with um, an easy to measure metric that will clearly tell us as in data or observable user behavior, whether we are making progress towards that goal. And that's how we, we um, I guess, enhance our focus and help ourselves not, not to get lost in details. Are you worried sometimes that this experience would mess up developers that you have in your team for any other company? Because this is picture perfect scrub if I hear you like this. <laughs> Not intended. <laughs> yeah, it will. Um, it will, definitely. Um, I'm, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong things, you know, but obviously we like those developers to stay with us, right? So if we can give them an incentive because they, for one, enjoy the work because we don't we don't tell them how to do their jobs. And then on the other hand, they can see the outcome, the benefits for people, right? Uh, coming right from their code. I think that's super, that's super interesting and intriguing and gives you lots of intangible incentives to stay in that team rather than than venturing outside you know yeah no oh, i agree with that I, I i like that approach you talked about scaling earlier uh what is the scale that you're looking forward in for in in let's say 2024 uh, how do you see this product evolve how do you see the organization evolve uh the, the, the people themselves uh, obviously scrum match will grow to rule the world um in a mega <laughs> Mega mega corporate mega mega corporation, um, but uh, but uh, <laughs> but but apart from that, I think it's just important that we 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 do what we 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 set out to do, and that is finding the the, the true the tr true scrum masters and finding and matching them with with, empl with employers. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Joe. Uh, I just no, I just want to add that uh, we are measuring success and value for scrum masters and recruiters by the number of matches we can create over time, right? So that's our strategic goal. And obviously scaling, um, if we want to scale, yes, we want to scale that, that's supposed to help us with that goal, right? Everything else, um, like the amount of money we might make through that is secondary. It's, it's, a, it's a side effect. It's a consequence of creating those super valuable matches for Scrum Masters and employers. Right, um, but what what would help scaling obviously is um, finding even more employers who want to use Scrum Match because they see value in the difference between a Scrum Master and a true Scrum Master, and also we we will start thinking about partnerships that we can build with uh, recruiting companies who have access to a lot of employers seeking help. Um, us being their experts in being able to tell the difference between any scrum master and a true scrum master. So that's um, that's the way we think uh, we can scale this more. And I, I suppose just on that point, Joe, fundamentally, we are saving money and time for employers. If you're looking for a scrum, if you're looking for a scrum master today, and I, I've sat in scrum master interviews, employers are getting hundreds of applications for scrum from scrum master candidates and fundamentally we're doing the job that they don't that they they shouldn't or don't want to do and we're sorting it for them and telling them you don't need to sit through those hundreds of interviews here's the top people you need to speak to i think um in addition to saving time and money during your recruiting process it's also about um saving a lot of good money that you throw after bad money, right? Um, if you hire the wrong Scrum Master, this wrong Scrum Master might take an entire team um, down the wrong path, right? Creating um, hundreds of thousands of dollars in 
um, either opportunity cost, so revenue, or any other value that you couldn't capture because you weren't at the market at the right time, or you create a lot of damage to your company, um, its financials and the people, right? You might just look at all the cynicism out there. Um, there are so many people currently just um, celebrating the death of Agile and Scrum, right? Um, that's that's it, it's all gone wrong, right? So let's fix that that industry and make sure um, there's value coming out of that for for everyone, like customers, businesses, and the people working at organizations building great products. Such a weird statement: the death of Agile, as if that's going to fade. I'm not saying that because it's sure. my job. But that's saying like, evolution is going to go away as well. Like this is what we're stuck at. Yep. No, I personally, I think agile is here to stay anyway. And then we, we continuously have to respect and adapt and, and maybe scrum will be in a different form in, in a couple of years, but the whole agile mindset or no, my, mindset might not be the right word, but the whole way of agile development, uh, having to, to jump in and, and use and adapt based on the new insights and, and new incumbents and, uh, keep going like that, that that will stay here forever uh, so all those people are celebrating the death of agile and I, the, it's a nice clickbaity title for your articles and to to get a couple more clicks on medium or linkedin or wherever uh, but it's such a yeah. such a shitty thing to say and also if you ask the people who are actually developing the software in what way do they want to work nobody's saying we want to go back to the waterfall way of development right no Please, micromanager, come back with your whip. Stand behind me. Whip me around. Please do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me let me say this very clearly. I don't care about Agile and Scrum, <gasps> really. Those things, call them tools, call them frameworks. Right? Sure. They are a means to an end. Um, and the end is being able to create and deliver more business value sooner. Right. Um, and that need for more business value, that's not going away. Right. Also, the amount of complexity hitting us like every day isn't going away. Right. I mean, just look at how the market changed. Look at how the economies have changed. Right. So, oh, it's only going to get worse. Absolutely. Unfortunately, I think so. Yeah. So we still need tools to solve complex problems right and whether this tool is called scrum or anything else that doesn't matter no but it, you also see equally just as many organizations or articles or agile preachers that say well we we deliver we're, we're executing scrum perfectly and you can sure but you can still execute scrum perfectly and deliver a crap product you can right yeah so uh, Scrum Match is fairly niche too when it comes to Scrum Master. Uh, are there going to be any other options like product owner or yeah, absolutely. the whole shabam? Is it going to go beyond just Scrum, just quote unquote? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's on the product backlog, right? So we're not going to do this just now, but we do think about um, whatever the name will be, like Agile Coaches or Agile Leaders or um, let's call them Product development experts or product owner coaches or team coaches, right? Um, so we keep thinking about this, definitely. Stephen, what's your hope and dream for, for Scrum Match? Uh, apart from the, uh, the, the aforementioned <laughs> world domination, um, oh, 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 what I'd like to see is um, I, I'd, I'd, like to see, I'd, like, I'd like to get to a point where we, we are known as the the people who can say that's the that's the right scrum master for you and, and i think that to the point when 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 employers know that we are their first port port of call for finding their scrum masters that's the point where i'll be happy o only a small expectation so you're looking to become the authority when it comes to fill you're going to be the authority filter when it comes to professional true scrum masters absolutely i like that i like that Gentlemen, I think we were at the end of this episode. Maybe one last question. What's going to be the next sprint goal? Oh, I should know this off the top of my head, I guess, right? Uh, actually, I don't. So cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. March, listen in. Here's where we need to cut. Uh, well, 
if you if you if you think this is funny, we can also keep it in. Uh, but let me look at this, and here's a reason why I don't know it because we already achieved our current one, even though our sprint is only going to conclude on Monday, and we just haven't set a new sprint goal yet. Right. So we'll wait until Monday, um, see what data tells us. Right. It's giving us a direction. Obviously, we're working towards a product goal. Right. Um, product goal is a certain number of employers on the platform. So I guess then when we come come together on Monday um, during sprint planning, we will discuss a goal that we think is going to support us with that product goal. I like that. Sounds good. Gentlemen, I'm curious to see what's going to come up. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you guys. And thank you for your sponsoring of this, this podcast. Thanks, Sander. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you. That is all for today. Thank you for listening. If you liked this episode, let us know by hitting that like button, share it with friends and colleagues, sharing a message on LinkedIn, joining our warm and welcoming Discord community, or attend recordings as a virtual audience. You can find all the relevant links in the show notes. We hope you'll tune back in for the next episode of the Mastering Agility Podcast.